The A9 begins with Saku, a single young employee at a big company, who's getting ready for the day under the care of a mysterious figure. When she gets to work, her friend Yuri spots her looking at pictures of the largest cats, as she explains that she got one and is curious about how big they can get. She mentions to her that getting a pet while single would ruin her chance soft getting a husband, but is quickly cut by a co-worker informing her about a meeting. However, she offers to help her take care of the animal in case it's too much for her. When she gets home, she finds a really odd sight, though it seems to be normal for her. Her cat, Yukichi, is a very large car, so much that he's actually human size and does the house chores for her. The animal points upset at the time as he has been waiting for her with dinner ready the whole afternoon. She quickly apologizes and eats the food. She stars falling asleep on the floor after the meal, so the cat drags her to the bathroom and starts showering her. While she finishes her shower, he keeps cleaning. After she's done, she wanders through the kitchen and while looking for it, she finds something that he made for tomorrow's lunch, but she insists so much in eating it that he feels guilty and prepares it for her. The food is delicious, but that reminds her of what Yuri told her, as Kat and owner behave like a married couple, so she demands more upset that she might end up alone. In the end of the night, the cat has to drag her to her bed. The next morning, he wakes up very early to make breakfast and lunch for her, being Aloe's in charge of having to wake her up. Before she leaves hours later, she complains about not wanting to work anymore and even though he hugs her and pats her head, he sends her off to work without much hesitation. Throughout the day, we see Yukuchi doing housework and memorizing recipes from Tev, always being ready to have food served for his owner, but the girl calls home explaining that she won't be able to make it home, as she has too much work to finish. Meanwhile, the office is a complete mess and people have started to freak out about deadlines. In the middle of that whole rampage, Sako gets a call from home and only takes the cat a simple click of his tongue to make the girl work at the speed of light. Back at home, she gives the cat a little handmade cat bed that Yuri gave her, as it belonged to her parents' late cat, although it won't be able to fit Yukichi. However, he seems to like it, so he tries it in many ways, ending up sleeping on it as some sort of helmet. The next morning, while he gives the girl her lunch, he gives her a bag with sweets for her friend as a thank you for the gift. When she gives the girl the gift, she starts making the foods about how tasty those are and how good of a housewife she is, making other coworkers join in, though this is hard for Saku, as she feels guilty for making them believe that it's her doing when it's her cat's. This gets to the point where she almost slips the truth, so she has to accept the credit. Later that evening while she works, her boss comes to give her a file that she was looking for, but the girl gets startled when he asks about her cat. She tries to ask about it, but he only mentions that he's met him and leaves for a call, even leaving the place for a business trip soon after. She's terribly worried on the trip back home, thinking that it's going to keep her awake the whole weekend, but all her worries wash off when she crosses her flat door and sees Yukichi with dinner ready. Early the next morning, the cat goes to take out the trash. Coming across an elderly woman, she smiles and points out how much he's grown, thanking him for helping her with her trash. She mentions about the night Saku brought him, as it was a terrible snowstorm and the poor thing was very little. She didn't think he'd make it, but she was happy to see him so big. He accompanies the older woman to her flat, and she gives him some dry seaweed that he loves as a gift. Later, Saku wakes up to Yukichi making meatballs with the seaweed, and immediately sits to eat. But when she asks for more, the cat denies and brings a scale instead forcing her to wait herself, having to do it against her wish. Yukichi is remembering the night when Saku brought him to her apartment, was full of trash, and it was a complete mess. But he knows that if his human didn't have saved him back then, he wouldn't have survived, so he made the choice that night of taking care of her. However, he knows how capitalism works, and like any other cat, he wants to take advantage of his human, so he takes care of the girl, so she can earn money and buy him as cat can, so everyone is happy. While he remembers, the girl arrives at the house and passes out. So having his choice in end, he helps the girl to get clean and right into bed. During the weekend while he cleans, Saku finds a picture of him when he was a kitten, so she decides to sit him down to talk, asking how come he got so big. Getting a little offended, he brings a scale for her, but she quickly fixes the misunderstanding. She asks how come he can do all these chores as a normal cat wouldn't be able to. He calls himself a masterful cat, something that implies that he's not a common cat, but as the girl asks, he starts remembering one time he took care of her while she was crying apparently sick. However, he quickly brought back to reality and shooks his head, not having an answer for her. She lets it go quite easily, or that's it until she remembers that her boss, Orizuka Karu, said he met him, which gets the girl worried again, wondering if he visited her house around the time when she first got Yukichi, something about three years ago. The problem is, the house used to be full of trash, and now they are both worried about the impression they gave the man, but the cat fixes it up giving his owner b until she forgets about the issue. Later. Yukichi goes to do groceries, making the customers start slipping into insanity, as they think they have started to hallucinate from tiredness. One of the employees of the shop, Ryo, tells her manager to do something about it, but the man only shakes his paw, delighted by how soft it is. Some time after, she stares at him, thinking that it's just some random dude in a cat suit, but he stares back. She apologizes for being rude and asks if he sewed the suit himself, to which the animal holds the apron he's wearing very proud. 
Later in the evening, she's telling her managers that she's clocking out, but she finds him smiling at letters from customers, saying that they love the cat and he wonders if he may get him to work for them. A new working week starts again and Saku's fast pace of working is praised by one of her bosses, which makes her happy and also makes her wonder if she's forgetting about something. Then that something walks through the door and Kaoru asks to talk to her in private. As they make their way in a elevator, she starts spiraling about everything that he knows, but he only praises her work and how better she looks since she got her cat. She then asks him when did he meet Yukichi, and he used said explains that he came across her once while going back home. She was wasted, so he accompanied her back to her apartment, and once at the door she couldn't find her keys, but the cat opened the door, hit her and bowed to the man, making him think that he was waited. She's ashamed, but still asks if he saw the inside of the house, which he conforms. She's terribly embarrassed and asks what she can do to make it up for him, to which he invites her at the aquarium at the end of the month. Once back home, she tells her cat about it, and he excitedly asks to bring him some merch from an idol group that will be performing there. Yukichi does the dishes as he worriedly thinks about his useless human, he's worried about her losing her Joe because she still dons know how to organize the trash for recycling. However, as she praises his food, all of his anger washes off. As he calmly folds laundry, the girl comes packed up asking for him to teach her how to cook, as she has to keep up the lie at work. And although he hesitates at first, he quickly grabs a cooking book and chooses the easy's recipient, plain rice with raw egg on top. However, the girl is a terrible cook, and as soon as she cracks the egg on top of the rice it previously cooked for her, Tons of eggshells fall on top of it. The indignated cat quickly picks them up for her, allowing her to put some soy sauce on top of it, but she pours the whole bottle into it. Upset about it, she starts looking through the book and realizes that she's never bought it, but also that those are all of the foods the cat started to cook for her when he was still tiny. This makes him feel embarrassed and hides in his cat bed. Wick the girl finds adorable and asks for him to make some rice balls, the first dish he ever made for her. He complies to her desires and is able to take the wooded rice into porridge. The next morning, he wakes up early as usual, but the day doesn't start as well for him. He gets distracted by a fly and crack an egg on the counter. He stabs his paw on the table leg while he brings breakfast over, and when Saku is asking him about her phone, she accidentally steps on his tail. She runs to work soon after and Te poor cat's morning gets worse. Some tissues got into the laundry machine, and now he has to wash a blanket again. He hangs the clothing but rain starts pouring immediately, so he has to wash it all again. To calm himself, he gets some cap treats and reads an account book. He then is watching too when Saku is being interviewed by the news, as the rain was very sudden. The reporter points out her umbrella and assumes someone packed her up for her and she doesn't deny it, even mentioning how thankful she's to have him. So later that night when she arrives home, Yukichi has made a big dinner for her, even having premium for her and a can of cat food for himself. So some days later she brings some catnip straws for him, but the cat quickly takes the pleasure of enjoying them as if tea were... Some days later, he wakes up early again, but finds the girl already awake, something definitely not normal, so he quickly pulls out a thermometer. The girl pleads that she's not sick, but after the undeniable 384 degrees, the cat pushes her back to bed. She complains that she has many meetings that morning, but he forces her to call in sick. She does and gets only half of the day off, so she starts thinking about ways to sweat off the fever, but the cat forces her to rest. The day goes by, and although she has taken some medicine, she begs for the cat on her sleep, promising to get better at work. She wakes up around midday not so sick, but still tired. However, when she notices that the cat is carefully folded around her, she decides to call in sick for the rest of the day and enjoy the animal's silent company. The day of the aquarium arrives quickly and Yukichi can't help but to mock his owner, treating the deal as a date, even packing a big lunch for her and her boss. However, the girl doesn't see it like that, but is aware that she can't go wearing a suit, so she tries a casual dress that she hasn't worn in ages, but the time and cat's meals make their presence known, as it doesn't fit. Luckily for her, her skilled cat is able to tailor it for her so it fits right in. She quickly leaves and finds Kaoru with a little girl in his arms. Past the first shock, he explains to her that the little girl, his niece Yu, was usually looked after by his parents, but they weren't available that day, so he was stuck with her. Covering the girl's ears, he confesses that he's not good with kids, so now she's working with him as a babysitter. After she wins her over by how cute she is, the man has to end the phone call and Yume asks her if she likes cats and how does her look like. She explains that he is big and black, which makes the little girl point somewhere. When Sakura turns around, she sees Yuki hiding behind a wall. He apparently followed her to see how things were going for her, just like an overprotective mother. She loses her of sight for a moment, and it's enough for the little girl to be glued to the cat like a fly. She panics, but by the time Kaoru pays attention to them again, her cat got hidden and Yum goes gladly back to his uncle's arms. They get in line for the idol event, and the girl explains to her boss that she knows the songs and dances of the band, which surprises him. Once in her seats, she overhears some girls talking about a cat, and she turns around to find her cat in the higher rows, waiting for the show to start. She tries to make signs at him for him to leave, but the cat pulls out merch of the show and simply stays. 
The show starts, but Saku is unable to focus. However, a special interactive quiz part of the show begins and she worried when Yuki raises his hand, but a microphone crossing in front of her face surprises her. Kaoru rose his hand and answered the trivia perfectly, winning a limited merch item for his little niece, who thanks him very excited. This makes the older girl laugh, calling him Uncle Kaoru. Once the show is over, she mentions that he's not bad with kids, which surprises him as he considered his day off ruined by the little girl. She mentions that the fact that he remembered things she likes is enough, but when they ask Yoon's opinion, the girl is nowhere to be found. They look for her and find her alone with the basket Yukichi prepared for them in hand. So now the owner of the cat has to make an excuse about a friend of hers that they saw earlier. They eat and have fun looking at the fishes for a little longer. At the end of the day, she promises the little girl to play with her some other time. When the proto arrives home, she finds her cat out on the floor as he was exhausted. Sometime later, she hears the slug idols on Tetiv, and when she makes it to the living room, she records the cat dancing to the songs. He goes after her to make her delete the video, but he can't catch her. Meanwhile, at the convenience store, the manager still daydreams about the big cat and Ryo jokingly recommends him to put a hiring sign for cats, which he does. Some days later at work, a blonde girl asks Saku if she makes sure cat do exercise as her friend's cat got too f and she had to put it on a diet and regular exercise. She mentions that she lets Yuki do as he places, which worried her friends because she doesn't lock her doors. Some time after that at home, she complains about her back pain and the cat starts helping her stretch. But when they get to the massages, he can't help but give in to his instincts and scratch the girl's back. While looking at his gloves, the girl realizes that there's no store who'd sell them, so she notices that he made them himself, very surprised about his skills. One night, Saku comes back home stumbling after a party from the office, but when she comes across the door, Yukichi's senses are triggered by the smell of dog in her clothes, as she was petting some on her way back. She then tells about it to Yuri, as the cat got terribly pissed off at her. The girl mentions that her family cat used to like liking products of her face, thing that luckily the big cat doesn't do. The next morning, he gets her owner perfectly ready for work, as she's barely able to wake up. However, her co-workers think that she's the perfect woman for being able to be so put together. As she's making some printing, Kaworu gives her an invite to Yu's birthday party, as slow giving her one for Yuki. But luckily for her, He'll be on a business trip, so he won't find out about the cat. Back at home, he gives her cat the invite, but explains that he won't be able to go, even if the girl is upset about it. However, the cat stands up and goes to pick a recipe to make for Tep Party. She's already panicking, but he shows her the part of the invite that explains that it's a costume party, so he'll be able to go. The next day at work, she keeps thinking about it, but knows she can't allow it to happen. Yet, when she gets back home ready to tell her cat that he can't go, he had made a little Yuki plushie as a gift and is currently making a costume for her. She ends up dressing as a mouse and he puts a zipper on his back to fake a huge cat costume. But as soon as Taeyar at the agreed address, she wants to go back home, as the house is way too close to hers, and if anything happens, they have to move out. However, she doesn't have much time to think when Yoon sees them and her friends rush them inside the house. The kids are delighted with the Tita, but the mothers start remembering all the rumors about the large cat in test stores they frequent. Luckily for their cover, the women see the zipper and are eased. Yu's mother goes to say hi to Saku, introducing herself as Koro's older sister, which at first doesn't hit, but once it does, the younger girl is surprised to see that someone who looks even younger than her could be her 32 years old boss older sister. They engage in a relatively calm conversation, and the woman doesn't seem to be bothered by the fact that she totally believes that Yukichi is a cat, which reminds his owner to look for him. The woman explains that her daughter might have taken him to see her grandmother, which is fine because they used to have a cat there, as the house is the one she grew up in. In the second story of the house, Yoon drags Yukichi along to see her grandma, but the cat knows he shouldn't be alone with adults. However, she blows him with some sea slug idol merch and he gladly tags along. When they get to the room, the girl explains to him that her grandma has gone blind, which helps Yuki feel a little more confident when the woman offers her hand to him. She praises his fur and explains that he looks like her late cat, a very big and smart cat as well. Saku finds them and immediately tries to defend her pet, to which the woman tells her that she's very lucky to have an Anko cat, as she explains that her own grandfather used to tell her that black cats are called Anko Cat and are a sign of goof luck. The party ends up after cake, presents, and pictures, which makes you sad, but still invites them to come by any other time. As they walk back home, Saku feels the need to mess with Yukichi pulling his zipper down. They end up in the park where she found him, remembering good old days. Meanwhile, Kaoru is on the train back home when his sister sends him the pictures of the day, and although he finds Yuki a little creepy, he recognizes that he should bring the girl a souvenir for making the effort. Some days later, the large cat is worried about his humus, as she had another party at work and is not coming home. She calls and explains that she felt too tired, so she's resting in the nearby park. This upsets the cat, as she doesn't have any sense of danger, so he goes, pan in hand, to look for her. The urge of hitting her is big, but when she starts rambling about his name and food while asleep, he stops himself and carried her home instead, deciding to wait for her at the station every time she goes out again. 
Winter arrives, and with that, Saku's terrible despite for it. She asks Yukichi for the kotatsu, but he reminds her that a year ago she broke it by spilling her on the plug, so now he won't allow her to buy another one. She tries to buy it in secret, but he finds out and tries to melt her phone. She then thinks about him, so she decides to go do groceries herself, so she can buy treats for him, but he's already gone by the time. At the market after doing his shopping, he sees that the store is making a lottery game in which one of the prizes is a new kotatsu, but he tries and fails. He goes back home defeated, and when he doesn't find his owner, he thinks the worst. He runs out, tears in his eyes just to slam the door on her nose. It turns out that she went to the store to buy the treats and found the lottery outside, an elderly woman gave her her ticket, and she ended up winning the kotatsu, which makes the cat hide his consolation prize. She instills it and places only cat food on it, promising not to eat or drink on it. Saucy won't ruin it again. Yet the kid stands up to bring her a so they can enjoy it together. In the end, he guys it off, gifting the girl many pretty pictures. One night, she brings back home some green tail fox, hoping Yuki will cutely play with it. But instead, he just places it in a nice bass, even knowing its scientific name. The next day, he receives a package full of cat supplies, scaring the living soul of the delivery guy. Later that night, when Saku arrives from work, she receives a petty text from her mother, explaining that she sent him some stuff for Yuki and demanding a picture of him. The girl is upset and doesn't seem to get along with her mother. She tries many pictures, but the other one is never satisfied. They end up following the large cat's idea and place the phone in perspective, making it look like he's playing with a foxtail. Meanwhile, the woman shows the picture to her husband, and although she complains about their daughter, he knows that she doesn't really mean it. Sako considers about making a photo shoot so she'll have some pictures to send to her mother and to show off at work, but quickly trails off from the real target. Some days later, her mother sends her a package explaining that she felt a bit guilty about not sending her anything. When she arrives back at home, she sees Yukichi completely fangrelin over a sharpening stone. She's surprised about the cat's happiness, asking about how he got it going without the tool, to which he shows her that one can sharpen a knife at the bottom of a teacup, even mocking her for not knowing. Then her mother calls, asking if she was on a date. This upset the girl, but still thanks her for the gift. They chat a little, but soon the woman asks to hear the little cat mewing, but Yukichi has never meowed at her. So she expounds that he's not the type to make noise, then that the woman buys. She manages to appease her by letting her hear his purr. She lets him be and goes to take a bath while he sharpens his cooking tools. She thinks it's cute, and that if she knew he wanted one, she'd buy it for him. However, when she comes out of the bath, she thinks that he looks terrifying, sharpening knives with a huge grin on his face. In the end, they both enjoy the perks of her mother's gift. After a really long meeting, Saku and her friends go out to eat their lunches, but the girls are jealous of hers because it always looks so good. Wick makes them think she's looking for an exceptional man to marry. However, she's definitely not thinking about that until they mention it, which makes her start thinking about it, starting to fantasize that as she's useless at house labor, she'll have to marry with Yukichi by her side. This immediately leads to her imaginary husband trying to divorce her and keep the cat, who gladly goes with her. The girls start talking about their types and Yuki mentions that she'd like a man who spoils her rotten and is good at housework. But she thinks that there are not many men like that, although Saku says that there are, but she's mostly thinking about her cat. Her insecurities get so bad that once she gets home, she asks the cat if he'd leave her for someone with a higher salary than her, to which the cat affirms without hesitation, hurting her feelings. Thanks to this, she decides to study so she can improve her salary, but he insists of her sleeping schedule, convincing the girl in the end much against her liking. Some days later, they are watching a show about ghosts, and although she says she's not scared, she's definitely terrified. She doesn't want to take a bath alone, but he forces her. Once alone in the bath, the girl starts overthinking. Every noise makes her wary, panicking to tech cat's shadow when he places things for her in the bathroom. Later, when they both go to bed, she can't sleep at all, panicking to every shadow and noise. Yukichi gets out of bed, but after a while he doesn't come back so scared about being alone, she goes to look for him and finds him sipping at the water that drips from the faucet. They sit down at the table, because he wants to make her forget what she saw with and the girl points out that he shouldn't be ashamed of it, accidentally slipping out the fact that she was scared because of the show. But his ridiculous actions took the fear out of her. Some nights later, the girl is looking at some cat owner's posts to know how a normal cat behaves, which gets Yuki jealous. She then explains that Kaoru has been asking more and more about him as it seems to be concerned about him because of the previous state of the house. However, the cat tries to show her that he can do normal cat stuff, but ends up doing ridiculous things that no cat could do. It is a lost case, but Saku can agree with the fact that no matter how cute other cats are, her cat would always be the cutest. This makes her cat happy, so he ends up giving her tons of food, which she wishes could brag about with friends. Some days after that, the girl is late for work, so she rushes her cup of cough, but ends up spilling it all over the wall. She thinks Yukichi is going through a fit over it, but the cat is always 10 steps ahead of her, so he pulls a second layer of wallpaper. Tech girl is in prees and rushes out of the flat. Meanwhile, the masterful cat is left alone to replace the whole wallpaper. Very proud of himself for his skills, Nad the perfect look of the house. 
However, there's a little furniture that also received a splash of cough, so instead of cleaning it, he decides to renovate it, making a whole new furniture out of it. Once back home, the girl is gladly surprised but also very aware that he shouldn't be able to do such things. Yukichi knows that a homely home is important for the development to excellency, but his owner's lack of delicacy always gets to him. This time, like many other days, the girl is trying to skip work, making him have to wake her up by again. One day, while out to do groceries, Yukichi finds Yoon curled up sleeping in a box. He carefully wakes her up and she explains that she's looking for a new home for the kitty, pulling out a kitten from her clothes. The bigger cat is worried and tries to get her home as soon as she starts sneezing, but she refuses, so he manages to curl around her, giving her some warmth. Soon, the kitten clings to his fur, trying to get some milk, making the masterful cat have to buy some formula for him. Yoon feeds the kitten happily, but soon starts crying when she thinks about how much she wants to keep him, but pets aren't allowed at her house. The weather quickly makes changes and it starts raining, so he takes her, kitten and all, to his elderly neighbor house. The older woman accepts to find a house for the little one being able to get him one in less than a minute. They leave the little kitty in charge of her until his new owners can pick him up, but while walking, the girl starts crying, not wanting the kitty to forget her. Yuki hugs her softly, but the girl starts crying harder. Luckily for him, her mother arrives in no time looking for her, and although he's worried thinking that she might take him for a she thanks him for looking after her and they both leave together. Not many days after, the news about a girl in the area spread fast and Yukichi is worried about his owner getting attacked, so he rushes to the convi to buy an alarm and some peeper sperry. The day goes by fast and almost by midnight, the girl hasn't made it home, so he goes to look for her pan in hand. He hears some stuggling and finds Ryo being held by her ex, who demands to talk to her, but calls her stupid, which seems to be the main reason why she cut him off. The cat gets in the middle and the boy tries to attack him, but suddenly Saku pulls him down and recores him, threatening with taking him to the police station if he doesn't leave. The boy runs away and Ryo thanks her, but she doesn't get her name because the police gets close by. Afraid of them discovering her cat, the woman rushes him home although he's still frozen by the situation. The other girl agrees to stay behind to explain Tess's situation, so they would have time to get away. Once at home, Saku hears the news and realizes why Yuki was outside, but the cat is about not being able to protect any of the girls. However, his owner mentions that some food would make her feel better, and that's something he can define Kelly do. Yukichi is remembering again the night Saku brought him home. The house was pretty much a trash dump and while looking for something he could eat, she finds some spoiled milk and many other expired things, which makes the cat think she's dangerous and try to leave. She rushes to get him, and as some boxes are about to fall on his fragile body, she cover him with herself, saving him. She leaves to get him some food and he allows himself to fall asleep. When he wakes up, the girl had put a box, milk and food for him, also covering him with her scarf while she sleeps in the floor among the trash. The next morning, the girl is late for work, but there's a cockroach in the bathroom. So thinking he could pay off his debt, he does it, and the girl is able to go to work clean. However, thinking that was not enough, he stays to clean the flat, finally forming their forever bond. One night, as Yuki is doing the cleaning, Saku calls home explaining that she won't be able to make it to dinner because she has another party. Once the event is over, she says goodbye to her co-workers, who admire her for being too much and not even seeing the slightest bit. However, when she makes it back home, she falls to the ground, spilling her nonsense on her cat. He helps her in, feeds her some soup, helps her bath, dries her hair, massages her legs, and helps with her night skincare routine, leaving her fresh for the morning. So the next morning, she's doing her best at her job. Yuri is definitely taken aback. She does, however, accept the the girl offers her. But what upsets her the most is the fact that her clothing doesn't have a single cat hair. She explains that her cat loves using lint rollers, although the other girl takes it very differently from what it really is. Later that night, she keeps being spoiled by the luxurious meal her cat has for her, not really caring for about how different from other cats he is. Some days later, while Yukichi goes about his day, the elderly neighbor, Mei, brings him a form recruiting volunteers for cleaning the park where he was found, so he of course goes. The others are naturally surprised about a cat helping, but the woman quickly convinces them of letting him help. May the masterful cat he is, he cleans fast and prunes the bushes like a master, helping finish before schedule, so the group engages in a gate ball match. The match is finished soon after that for the lack of players, but Teddy still gift him a gate ball stick, which he's polishing when Saku comes back home. Some days later, he's peeling out a blanket to dry in Tess's son when he accidentally steps on the tail of the kitten. May quickly recognizes her from the other balcony and asks for him to bring her over. The kitten is Dai, the one him and Yoon found, and that she's looking over while her family is on a trip. So having to leave for some groceries, the woman asks for him to put Yuri in her crate. Sadly for him, the little kitty Jazz gotten fond of him and won't let go, so he simply resigns to stay with her for some time. After a while, he's tired to just sit there with her. So he gives her the bag of her things to find some toys, he doesn't sit well when he has nothing to do, but Dai has other plans. She latches herself to play with his tail, but he ends up tossing her across the room. 
However, she finds it hilarious and keeps playing like that for a while. Later that evening, Mei comes back and finds them both sleeping under the late sunlight, curled up together. When Saku comes back home, she launches at him as usual, but this time he ends up petting her head as he sees her, just like the little kitten. Days later, Yuri and Oshira meet up for lunch as Saku is bussy with a meeting. The blonde girl complains about many men in the office asking for her to introduce them to Tech Cat owner, which kinda upsets her. She explains to the other girl that she has changed much, as when she joined the company, she was often shy and messy, to play, and at the verge of breaking up. However, one day she started bringing homemade rice balls and ever since she has become better at everything, which makes her suspicious about the filling of the food. Yuri mentions that she met her a year ago when she was job hunting as she would always see her in the train. She was caught by her beauty and firm stand, which surprised even more when she realized that she was sleeping standing without holding onto anything. However, the day that changed everything for her is when Saku realized that a man was hurting her and she jumped out to help her, twisting the man's arm and getting him to the authorities. So as a thank you, she invited her to have dinner and she has remained closer to her, admiring her ever since. Although both girls have a perfect image of the girl, at home she's nothing more than messy, having to be scolded by her cat. The protagonist surprises Yuri looking at destination locations and the girl tells her that she should be picking soon, as the company trip is in a week, which she has completely forgot about. The past two years she won't able to go because Yuki was still a kitten, but this time everyone at the office has begged for her to go as they could stand to their boss drinking abilities as much as she does. The other girl is very excited about it, but after realizing that her last trip was when she was at high school, Saku is more worried. So much that one she gets home and tells her cat about it. She seems to look for excuses to stay, but he has everything handled, even helping her pack. Then it hits her. She won't have Yukichi for two whole days. She might not make it home. The thought keeps her up at night, even crying about him not seeming worried. Once she's able to fall asleep, he clings to her, rubbing his head against hers. The day of the trip arrives, although she doesn't really want to go, she gets ready. Before leaving, Yukichi reaches for her to give her a folded paper, to what she at first thinks is a letter, but it only ends up being a list of magazine cutouts that he'd like for her to bring from her trip. This upsets her deeply, but she ends up leaving anyways. In her way on the bus, she's furiously looking up the list her cat gave her only to find things she'll like, making her understand that her not so little one was worried about her not wanting to go on the trip. Boshiro approaches her to joke about it, but it only makes her feel worse. They arrive not much after that. At home, Yukichi leaves the house spotless as always, but he soon runs out of things to do. So like every cat feeling homesick after his owner leave, he sleeps on Saku's clothings, but has to clean them of fur after. He decides to watch some Tiv to pass time, but everything reminds him of her. He goes later to the store and comes across Ryo clocking out, who realizes that his dinner is only cat food. She rushes after him to give him a and share her wishes of his owner coming back soon. Back at home, he pissed awfully starts cleaning again. With Saku, her friends get a normal problem she wouldn't have a solution for, like getting a blaster or spilling saws over, but Yukichi has foreseen this and packed things for her to be ready, so she ends up praying to her savior. Later at night, once the boss is out, she goes to take some fresh air, but soon feels empty and upset, as although food was delicious, she much rather her cat's cooking. Kaoru comes after her, worried as she seemed to be drinking quite fast, and of course, she puts a perfect face for him. He asked about her cat, worried about him being alone overnight, but she explains that it might be easier for him now that she's off. He mentions that actually cats attach to the home, but before he could keep talking, she falls all seep. He ends up having to carry her all the way to her room, even having to actually hold her bride style, as she's passed out. The girls take care of her, worried that she might have alcohol but she suddenly wakes up, decides to call back home. Once he picks up, she starts rumbling about how much she misses him making the cat purr and the girl cry out of happiness. She hangs up quickly and starts rolling around, completely gone out of cuteness, only to fall asleep a second after. Oshiro is definitely having a time of her life. At home, Yukichi decides to sleep in her clothing to feel closer to her. The next morning, the girls are handling a hat for Saku the best they can, although she's not any better. That night, she makes it home, nervous about seeing the cat again, but she enters the flat anyways, enjoying her night wrapped around her huge cat. Once again, Yukichi wakes up very early to get Saku's breakfast and lunch ready, working very hard so she can work hard as well and earn money to buy his cat cans, but is taken aback by the girl's lack of interest for going to work. However, it all seems to be worth it when she promises to cheer with him when she gets home as it's payday, but she p***ed out as soon as she gets through the door that night. She's happily asking for seconds when while laying on the table, the clasp of her snaps open. He rushes her to a scale and is completely to see she's gained weight. She promises to exorcist, but he takes out the sequins away from her. After some begging and promises to get on a dies, he allows her to keep eating. But next day at work, many girls of Ta office bring her sweets to her for helping them, which she cannot say no to, making her gain more weight. The cat decides to put her in a strict exercise routine and one month later she's lost 600 grams, which she thinks is more than enough, but after seeing how buffed her cat got, she knows she can't take it slowly. She cuts out her 
and snacks going back to her desired white within a week, also making Yukichi go to his chubby form as well. Some time after we see Yuri going back to her parents' house to visit and bring back gifts from the trip, finding Ryo there as well as they are cousins. The older girl asks for her to share some love stories, as due to her work she doesn't even have time to fall in love, to which she explains that she's interested in someone, remembering the time Saku saved her. Her cousin is surprised and happy for her, as her bad luck with men is making her consider getting with a woman, thing the other one was thinking as well. However the case, she explains she wants to give a proper thanks, so the next few days she tries to convince Yuki to get Saku to shop with him, hint he isn't getting. Some days later, he prepares some cat grass salad for himself, something he enjoys eating. But before he could even get to it, a package arrives and thinking it's for her, the girl starts eating it. Realizing that there are some human foods that are for cats, and that they don't know what type of grass it even is, they start panicking. They rush outside and encounter Mei, who tells them that it's not dangerous, but definitely tastes bad when eating it raw. In any case, she ends up blowing the toilet because of it. While watching a pet show about how owners and pets become alike, Yukuchi starts worrying about Sako behaving like him and how that might lead to him ending abandoned in a park, the terrible attitude she might get and things like that. The matter gets worse when she arrives home with a terrible face, but she quickly explains that she just has a headache and he helps her get better still worried about it. The next morning, she watches the same show and worry for a moment about him becoming like her, but she lets it go after realizing he might just act like a normal cat. Puig starts hard for the girls at the office, which are also by how fresh Saku looks in the mornings. They start thinking she might have a secret to it, which she actually does. However, she's just like them on weekends, complaining to her cat about even having to go to work two days after the last day of work. She keeps complaining until he starts f***ing her with his paw, and she realizes how soothing the smell is to her. He tries to get her into bed later, but she's not sleepy and keeps pestering him, thinking about living in a countryside or drinking some f*** to sleep. But it's only when he purrs on top of her that she's able to fall asleep. Back to Monday, the girls start talking about the relaxing properties a cat has, and she realizes that she's been having cat therapy. Some days later, she hears Yukichi humming the Sea Slug's idol group debut song, which she thinks is super cute, but doesn't know how to bring it up since the last time she did something about it, he got offended and never danced to it again. Thinking about what to do without him getting angry, she decides to just put on the song and start dancing. She thinks she's able to lure him, but he approaches to fix her posture and rewind the song, forcing her to practice for two hours straight. Some days after, the girl wakes up from a nap and doesn't find Yukichi anywhere, but he does find his purse. Worried that something might have happened to him, she rushes to the store to find him and comes over to Ryo, apologizing for leaving her alone that time with her ex. The girl doesn't mind and wants to thank her, but she brushes her off though at least got her surname. She then remembers about her cat and tag younger girl points at where he is, being held by her manager. Ryo asks her not to introduce herself to the manager, as it would get creeper if he got to know more about the cat, so they wait until he is alone to talk to him. Saku brings herself up by bragging about how he forgot his purse, but he shows her that he's been using a card so there's no need of cash. However, she's glad everything was up with him. We see a little more about the first days where Cat and owner met, when Saku runs late and accidentally leaves the door open. Seeing his way to freedom, he decides to pick out and sees Mei taking the trash out, so he decides to at least take one of the bags to repay her. He starts going back to flat thinking about getting more out before he leaves, but the thought troubles him. Then the woman realizes the door is open and goes to close it. Yukichi is up with it, but after remembering the girl's face, he rushes back inside and realizes, this is now his home and if he wants to get out, he should be able to open the door himself first.